So, in conclusion then, how are we feeling? Final thoughts on the game. It can be a final thought on the tournament for England or Italy. It can be a thought on what Mancini has done. Because we've spoken about it at length on the podcast and on all the, all the shows, how he's taken Italy from the apocalypse to the top of Europe. Dare I say, at this point, they go from missing the World Cup in 2018 to being one of the favourites for it in 2022. Final thoughts from all of you in a freestyle, whatever comes to your mind first, about Italy versus England today. I'm going to talk on behalf of England. You've got to lose one to win one. All right. Semi-finals in the World Cup. Finals in the Euros. Bring on the World Cup in Qatar. Yeah, but, you know, it's easy to, to sit here and... and uh, well, Tommy, I've got to say otherwise I'll cry. No, 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 no. But, but I think, you know, it's been great to watch this England team off the pitch as on the pitch. I think they're moving in the right direction. I, I think they've got the right manager. It's easy to you know, to be very disappointed right now. But, you know, we can't forget and England fans can't forget that this has been a brilliant tournament with, with a bright future. And as, as I agree with you, Bridget, I think that the World Cup and, and tournaments after that is looking very, very positive. Yeah, I agree. I think that England deserved to be in the final and they actually took Italy all the way, which they did. Uh, and it was such a fine line. Yes, in the second half, Italy got on top. But then, you know, you see an extra time, England. So if you average that out over 120 minutes, I don't think you could split the two. I don't think that uh, England didn't create as many chances as they would have liked to, but they did well. They, they had a really good tournament and they're, they're on the right track. And Gareth Southgate is the right person because on and off the pitch, they are class. They're a class act. What did Max Rushton say from the UK with Optus? He'll take the point. He'll take the point. Yeah, we'll take the point. <laughs> but the on, other, on Italy, so no, no, carry on, mate. So on Italy, I mentioned and I got they criticised for it, Bridget. You were one of them that criticised me. That you said is I said this is the best team that I've watched. Best Italian side. Hang on, John. Hang on a minute. He said what? Thank you. At the beginning of the tournament, after two games, I was like very quick to jump on the Italian bandwagon and say, this is the most exciting team, the best Italian team I've watched at a major tournament. I've watched the Italian 82 side that won the tournament. They drew their first three games in that tournament, just got out of the group stage. Then they were playing counter-attacking football. Sometimes it was frustrating to watch, but they ended up winning it. And then I, uh, I remember... What, 2006, obviously, and you know, I'm not saying that they didn't deserve to win the tournament, but uh, you know, they not they weren't always on the front foot attacking and 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 you know showing how good they can be with the ball. They had the good players, top players, household names. This team here, what a brand of football they played, and they showed all kinds of ways to win. And not only did they win the hard way on penalties, but they came from behind. They they played in the backyard of the, uh, the England national team at Wembley and still took the game to England. That's exciting to watch. So for me, they're the best team that I've seen, the Italian side that I've seen play. 34 games unbeaten, Bridgie. Yeah. That's a record. Mancini's a legend for I that. jumped on your bandwagon and defended your comments because social media and Opt Optus Twitter were just going, Johnny Aloisi <laughs> said, what? This is a disgrace. <laughs> we've had Baggio, we've had Maldini. Rightio, then give us an answer. <laughs> he said, he what? He said, what? What's going on? You messed it up. <laughs> and I defended you and I said, they had to win it to back up that comment. Johnny Aloisi, Italia, I salute you. Mancini, trophy winner with Italy. You said they had, if they had to win a trophy and that elevates them even above being the best to watch. What does this elevate their status to in, 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 in you know, what will they be talking about in Rome all across Italy today? Oh, they'll be talking about this side as one of the best that they've ever had. hundred percent because they know that they've gone uh, on a streak and to come from nowhere, to come from a, a side that failed to qualify. And you can imagine what the Italians are like when they didn't qualify all the negativity around the national team that our football's going nowhere, we're so far behind, you know, there's so many other nations in front of us. And Mancini walks into that, that Italian job and changes everyone's belief. That's, that's unbelievable. Yeah, and he's done a similar thing to Southgate. You know, he took some tough decisions to start with. He said, okay, I'm going to get some youth in here. I'm going to change the, the whole culture of the team. You know, a, a new energy. Uh, and, and I've got a set system. Uh, I'm not necessarily picking players just for, from Juventus and Milan and Inter. You know, I'm, I'm Sassuolo. I'm, I'm, I'm picking them where I find that those players fit my system who, who play with that energy. And you know it's it's you know incredible to think that you haven't lost in 34 games, and and also they had that run of 10 clean sheets mm. in a row leading into the Austria game. 
you know that those things are remarkable in it, in itself and and yeah coming through today as well winning in tough ways you know it's looking good for, for Italian football as well. Isn't it incredible to think that both these managers are in the final were not the first choices of both national team selections? Who was the first choice for Italy? I don't know, but Mancini was not in the run in the hierarchy early on. Sam Allardyce. Oh my, don't you mention <laughs> his name again. Honestly, I told you, the journalist should be knighted. <laughs> Do you know... It, 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 was, it was funny that in the last game in Podbridge when he said, you know, I'm looking forward to the, the World Cup. But everybody said, oh, here we go. I think this is getting carried away again. But you know what? Uh, we've seen the Copa America final. We've seen the Euros final back to back. It would be not a long shot to say that we saw if Italy and England go deep in the, in the World Cup next year. That would be par for the course. Yeah. Look, I look at the uh, English national team and you look at their squad and then I look at Brazil. Brazil have got amazing players. There's, don't get me wrong, but they've got... In their front three yesterday, they had Everton, Richarlison, Neymar. Take Neymar out of that. You would put every other English player in that front three. You know, they're, they're even on the bench, Sancho, Rashford, you know, I, 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 I think in front of Rich Olsen and Everton. So in, in terms of going forward, the English national team have got so many players coming through. They, they're, they're going to be quality for years to come. They just need to actually probably win that first tournament since 1966 and what that ends up doing, it gives you belief. That's why I think this Italian side still got a lot more because they got that belief. But can they replace Chiellini and Bonucci once they retire? That's the only thing. Can Chiellini go again for the World Cup? Oh, well, he needs to play. It, it, I, I think that he will go again. I actually think that uh, he needs to be lucky enough. See, what helped him, and no one's really mentioned as well, is that he didn't play the whole season at Juventus. If he played the whole season at Juventus, he wouldn't have been able to play these Euros. I think that he would have broken down or would have been too tired physically, mentally. So does he do a Gareth Bale and say he only wants to play international football and no, retire from club football? I don't think you can do what that What a either. statement that was, by <laughs> the way. Enjoying our YouTube channel? Be sure to subscribe and download the Optus Sport app.